Good morning, Isaac. Good to be with you again today. I have a brand new coffee mug. It says my cup runneth over. So oh. coffee all over the table here, but this was a uh, pastor appreciation gift here in the month of October from one of my church family. So uh, introducing a new cup as if I needed a new cup, right? I need to build an addition to your kitchen now for the additional mm -hmm. cabinets. That looks like a big cup, though. Is it tall? It is a big cup. It's tall cup. Uh, yeah. It'll hold two cups of coffee instead of one. Yeah. And so it's just, you know, for that cup to be running running over. That would <laughs> yeah, be a that's lot right. That's a lot of coffee if you can run this booger over. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good one. But I feel absolutely. like you can do it. Yeah, well, if anybody can, it should be me because I go yeah. through a lot of coffee. Maybe too much, but sometimes they say coffee's good for you, and other times they say it'll kill you. So whichever one of those it is, here we are. The first so, cup is good for you. Yeah, the first cup is always good. So we're in James chapter 5. We've crossed over from uh, several weeks in James chapter 4. We're going to look at the first six verses today and some companion scriptures in the New Testament as well. But uh, James... James kind of turns a corner here, and he's uh, going to rail on rich people for a minute. Um, yeah. It sounds like it's because they are the ones who are oppressing the Christians, which we'll talk about in a couple of weeks, but it could just be a good warning for those in the Lord's family who have been blessed monetarily to be careful with uh, how they think about their money. So either one of those would be valid, but let me read. Uh, James and most likely Fine. both. Most yeah. likely both. Yeah. Usually. Yes, right. A word for us and a word for others. Because regardless of whether we think of ourselves as rich or poor in this country, compared to anywhere else in the world, we are the richest people on the planet. So um, it, uh, it, there are principles here that certainly apply. So James says, come now, you rich now, it's interesting, in verse 13, he said, come now, you who say today or tomorrow will we go here and there. So he's really trying to get the attention of a specific group of people. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Oh, no. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded and their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. James, lighten up, man. This is tough. What? Yeah, he's really going after it here, isn't he? You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. Whew. James is a little heavy here towards the rich people who are abusing others, uh, not paying people what their due is. Um, man, he seems to suggest there's quite an accountability here to people who have uh, have wealth. What do you uh, What do you hear here? I hear a lot of that. <laughs> um, that's like you said, James kind of turned a corner here. Um, but I think, I don't know that it's as much of a corner as maybe we think it is. And that he uh, just got done finishing up chapter four, talking about those that plan for the mm. future, right? And those that plan um, for what, they, what they're putting together. And um, that really, it, it, it feels like those that plan out a career right? As the end of chapter four, he's talking about today or tomorrow, we're going to go to such and such a town and spend a year there and make profit, right? And so this is building yeah. of this wealth. Uh, he's talking about those that are planning, hey, this is my career plan to go build this wealth, right? And then he pivots to and continues that kind of thought process as mm -hmm. when you've done that, um, woe to you if you did it in a, in a, in a immoral way. Right. Mm -hmm. And so my kind of takeaway from these is that that nothing escapes God, that God yeah. is aware. Um, and I think, you know, we all look at, you know, we define richness in a different way. Usually, uh, usually we define it as those that have more than us. 
Right. Um, and rarely are we looking the other way at those that we have more than um, who see us as rich. But um, but when you look at that and you look at other other people, I think it's easy to be like, golly, man, like I know for a fact that person's not living right or that company got rich off of this mm. or they took advantage of these people and got there. And it's like, you know, why does sometimes we as humans in our own minds can question God, like, why is that the case? You know? And yeah. what this is encouraging is that, Hey, it's not the case that, that he's um, God is watching. God is keeping track. And those that take advantage of people in any format, um, God knows that he's aware of that and he will, will deal with it. Right. And so he's, he sees it. It's interesting to realize that he sees it happen, but then the oppressed, those who are suffering because of it, they cry out to the Lord because they know he cares. And then he listens having seen it and he's already seen it. There's no surprise, but listening to their cry intensifies his purpose to uh, make it all right. Now, maybe not in this life, but he, he is keeping score. He will judge the earth. Um, and so there will be an accountability. Uh, we can rest in the truth of the fact that God will hold people accountable for how they treat each other and how they use their riches. Um, because he says here that your riches are not going to last and they're not going to save you in the end. They're not going to be able to bail you out. Uh, your misery is coming. Uh, you've been able to avoid it. You've lived in luxury, but your riches are going to rot. Your garments, your fine clothing, it's going to be like they've been eaten by moss. Your gold and silver are corroded, uh, defiled, worthless, and their corrosion will be the evidence against you. So your, your riches are futile. They're temporary and they're fading. Uh, you're not going to take them with you into the next life. This well, reminds a, Go ahead. I was going to say, and it's, it's a reminder that the ends do not justify the means. Like, um, you know, this, he's calling out, it feels like he's calling out a specific group of people that may be promised wages for work and then um, neglected to pay them. <laughs> Right. Um, and, and have no intention of paying them the construction and have no intentions of doing so. Right. And so you take advantage of uh, the people that are working for you doing the work that brings you those wages. And so it's like, you know, again, tying it to the end of chapter four. If as you're planning to build wealth and that you're going to go to like. The accomplishing of the wealth doesn't take away your responsibility to how you treat people. Um, and, right, because there's a there's a higher calling. There's, a, right. you know, so often when James is talking about a subject, we realize that not only has James talked about it, but that Jesus talked about it, and Paul had a lot to say about it as well. And this this is certainly true. There was a guy who came to Jesus in Luke chapter twelve, uh, and he said, "Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me." So uh, it, it sounds like his brother was getting maybe the older brother who would get twice as much inheritance is being asked to share that more equitably, we would say, with his brother. And Jesus said, who made me a judge or arbiter over you? Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Jesus said there are a lot of things in life you could be worried about that are more important from a kingdom standpoint than whether you get whatever inheritance you think you should get. Well, and that's a good call out because uh, this, this word cuts both ways, right? Yes. Um, yes. And so to those that have much, um, you talked about those treasures are going to they're, they're not going with you, right? Um, right. They're, they're worthless in the kingdom of God. Um, but then, like oftentimes, this, this message can be pointed at the rich, and there's plenty to be said there, right? 
Um, yeah. But then those that don't have as much often are seen as being against those, but it's, you know, you don't have much. And God talks about, I was just reading the other day about God talking about, you know, don't worry about what you're going to eat and what you're going to clothe yourself with. God's going to take care of you. I got um, it. And it's just like, you don't need, oftentimes the battle is, it's a covetous one where if you don't have much, you want much. And then you, you um, are, are jealous and, and, or, and against those that have much because you want it. And it's right. like, no, that's not, that's just as wrong. That's just as wrong. Um, you know, wanting what you don't have. Um, and so it's, you know, ultimately God's saying, if you have things, don't find your, don't find your worth in those things. Right. Find it in me. If you don't have things, don't find your worth in what other people have and what you want. Find right. it in me. It's the same right. calling to, on both notice, sides of that fence. Notice in both cases, notice how I'm taking care of you, the Lord would say. Value that above what you think that you've accumulated because you didn't do that. I did. So Jesus and Jesus said this, this, he told them the story in the context of that conversation about the inheritance. He talked about the fact that there was a, a rich man who uh, his land, the harvest was, was producing plentifully. And he thought to himself, what shall I do for I have nowhere to store my crops? You know, just hear that. The idea of using them to help someone else doesn't even enter his mind. I've got to store my crops. I'm keeping it all myself. If I'm going to do that, I got to have bigger barns. I got to tear down my barns uh, so I can build bigger barns. And then I can say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this night, your soul is required of you. This guy was about to find out that his life is a vapor, which we talked about last week, right. and that his time was up, and all of his goods are not going to be his anymore. The things that you have prepared, whose will they be? The question is, the answer is not yours. So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. You can do both. You can have uh, success and monetary gain yourself, but in the context of that, you should be rich towards God. And my observation is the people who are very generous with what God has entrusted to them, he likes to entrust even more to them. Uh, because you have been faithful in a little, I'll make you faithful in much. So God likes to bless those who like to be a blessing to others, but he condemns those who think it's all theirs and they shouldn't share it with anyone. And that's the view. It's whose is it? Um, and if you're able to view, um, to view it as God's, then like you said, he one, you're going to be more open and willing and you're going to look for ways to give it and bless others because that's, that's who Jesus is. That's who God is. And so if he's in you and he's in, involved in um, what you have, you're going to see, you're going to find ways and he's going to bring ways for you to bless others with it. Um, that's just the way it's going to work. Um, and, but if you're focused on me, 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 acquiring it from me, this is mine, which can happen to those that have, and again, can happen to those that don't. Have. Right. If you, you want, 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 it's either you have, 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 or you want, want, want. Um, both are uh, materialistic views that are putting possessions uh, and tying our worth to what we have. Um, if you don't have much and don't feel like you're worth anything, it's like if you do have much and feel like that's what makes you worth something. Um, and it's those are the same, those are the same heart condition um, where you're, you are tying your worth and your mission on this planet to what you have. Um, instead of who God is not, you are. Instead of who God is and what God provides and what God wants you to do with his stuff. Right. And, and Paul, Paul said when he was writing to Timothy, he said, uh, contentment is the key here. Uh, if we can uh, find uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, um, he says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, we can take nothing out of the world. 
That's exactly what James is saying here. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. But those who desire to be rich, so whether they're rich or not, they want to be, those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. That doesn't sound like a place you want to be. No, but it sounds like a lot of people. I think it's a lot of people. Just described a whole bunch of them, didn't we? The desire to be rich. And either they are and the desire to stay that way, or they aren't, and the desire, they wish, so wish that they could be that way. Oh, what I would do if I had this or that, or looking at other people, I'm like, oh, he or she makes more money than me, and like, golly, that'd be a nice life, right? right? If only I had this kind of house, or if only I had this, and that car, and this, and it's like, not about any of that, not about any of that. No. And, and he goes on to say what we, we know very well, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. He doesn't say money is evil, but he says loving money is the root, the root cause of all kinds of evil. It will set you on so many bad paths. And it is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. There's much pain awaiting those who turn away and allow their pursuit of riches to distance them from God instead of looking at how they could be good stewards of whatever God has entrusted to them. uh, They're uh, forgetting about God and forgetting about God's purpose and plan for our riches uh, to be used for his kingdom purpose. And so what's the antidote for that? Well, Paul said in verse 11 of first Timothy, but as for you, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called and about which you make the good confession. So uh, refocus yourself, Timothy, on the eternal aspects of life. Refocus yourself on the things of God. Live that way as the pastoral leader of your flock, and it will give them a better model and a different example of how to live than the world will show them. Because really, there's a phrase used in James, uh, James 5, 5, where he's, he's talking to the, the, the rich and says, you have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. And I yeah. think that's the, that is what he is taking them to task on, is self-indulgence. Exactly. Right. And that's what Paul tells Timothy is the antidote is, you know, self-indulgence is the problem. Um, right. The solution to that is God indulgence. Yes. Right. Like right. that's the and that's really and we talk about it often that that's really the choice that we make every day. Choose God or choose yourself. Um, and we all have that choice, no matter our income and our bank accounts, um, to choose to indulge ourselves with ourselves and what we want, um, or what we wish we had, and to focus on that, or to focus on that list that Paul gave Timothy of eternal focused, God focused, indulge ourselves in God um, yes. and in his ways, and then see everything that we have as a blessing and gift from him that is give everything he gives us is given to us to be given to others, not necessarily directly a possession, like we right. just turn around, write a check to everyone else on everything, but it's given to us to be used by us to glorify God and to help others in some way, in some format. Like it's, we are blessed so that we can bless others. Um, and that that's the promise he made to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, that's pretty early in the book. I'm blessing you so that you will be a blessing to others. That promise and that concept flows even to today. And he does that with, with businessmen and he does it with, with whoever he wants to do it. Uh, and and Jesus yeah, and sometimes sometimes that means you give stuff away like it leaves your right. possession other yeah. times it means that you you keep stuff but you use it to minister to others in certain ways in certain formats whether right. it's you've got a great house that you use to host folks or that you use to uh, to welcome people into your home or i mean there's just so many different ways that that he shows up but it's at at the at the heart of it it's 
do you view your life and your possessions as being for you or for God? And if at the core, if you can get to the core of your existence um, and have that be more God focused and self focused, then that's going to permeate the things that you have. It's going to permeate your life, the people that you're around with and the things that you own. It's interesting in the book of Acts, Paul references a quote from Jesus that we don't see anywhere else in the scripture, uh, specifically what was the context of Jesus saying this. But Paul just mentions, of course, you know that the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And the joy of giving, uh, whether you have a little or a lot, uh, Jesus celebrated the widow who had two little pennies and she gave them both to the purposes of God. He said she gave more than all the rich people who were putting in cash and buckets of it, but it was all out of their excess. It didn't cost them anything. They never missed it. Um, and so just the joy of living a life to impact others with whatever God has entrusted you with um, is, a real, uh, is a real blessing. And God notices that. He's paying attention. So there's an accountability for riches. God watches and sees. There's a futility to them. They're not going to last. We should use them, use them up in this world for God's purposes. Uh, and there's a responsibility to how we handle them that we've seen today that is uh, is very impactful. So um, he's going to speak later about how the people who are being abused by the rich should handle that because there's a right way to do that as well. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but for now, a, a stern warning that we're accountable for what we do with what we have. So, and we all have, we, all, we all have. Yes. No right. matter no matter who we are, where we are, we have, and so we're accountable with to use what we have for Him and indulge ourselves in God. Amen. I like that. Let's go indulge ourselves in God today. I'll do it with a cup of coffee, and uh, <laughs> you have a great rest of the day. We'll see you next week. All right. Look forward to it.